An update on CM Punk status with All Elite Wrestling as AEW CEO, General Manager, Head of Creative Tony Khan is set to announce the location for the premiere episode of AEW Collision tonight live on AEW Dynamite. Is Daly's Place going to be the backup location for AEW Collision? Plus, is CM Punk even going to be there? What happened with these legal documents that were sent to CM Punk? Were they legal documents? Were documents even sent to CM Punk? All of this and more when it comes to CM Punk. An update on a new AEW logo that should be debuting very soon. An update on AEW Fight Forever as well. We have some concerns there was going to be less blood in Fight Forever. Well, there's still going to be quite a lot of it in the game. An update on Dark Side of the Ring Season 4 in terms of the episodes, the listing, the order of the episodes. Plus, how will Vice TV's bankruptcy affect the show? Mercedes Monet, she was meant to win New Japan Gold before her injury this past weekend. And Adam Cole opens up on his possible retirement plans if he was forced to retire through injury late last year. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of All Elite Wrestling. Let's start off talking about, well, the biggest thing going on right now in AEW, which of course is CM Punk. And there's a bit of an update when it comes to Punk, his status with the company, AEW Collision. Of course, Tony Khan is going to be making that announcement tonight live on Dynamite. Where is the premiere episode of AEW Collision, the new Saturday night primetime wrestling show? Where is that going to be taking place? Well... According to Sean Rossap of Fightful Select, CM Punk and All Elite Wrestling have remained in contact over the last week. Fightful Select has, is reporting that they have been told that. Regarding rumours that Punk was served with legal papers, which is something we spoke about the other day, Fightful Lab have been told that some documents were indeed sent to Punk to be signed over the last week. Now, they haven't been given any indication they were legal threats, but they have been told they covered speaking about certain subjects, disparagement clauses, and ensuring he appears at scheduled television television dates, largely to protect AEW in several situations. Now, whether or not they're legal papers or legal threats, if you're signing something that would imply it's a legal document, but again, as to whether it was a legal threat and, you know, the threat of a lawsuit possibly in the future, that looks to be a bit wider the mark, but certainly Fightful are suggesting that documents were indeed sent to the former AEW world champion. From the punk side of things, Fightful have heard that there have been productive conversations over the last week, that they haven't been able to have any context or been provided a lot of context on that, apart from they were productive. People close to CM Punk believe he would will be at the first AEW Collision show on June 17. So again, people within Punk's camp are suggesting, no, he is going to be there, despite all of the speculation surrounding his status and future. Now, as of last week, Fightful were not told that Daly's place was a backup location discussed explicitly, but were told there were places besides the United Center that were being discussed, which is quite interesting there. So... Essentially, what they're suggesting is that whilst Daly's place hasn't been discussed as a backup location um, explicitly, at the same time, other locations have been talked about, which would suggest the idea of a backup location is something as a subject that has been broached. Now, talent that Fightful have spoken to in AEW were not even given their travel for the first collision date yet, as of May 23rd, that being yesterday, of course, the first show is set to take place in less than a month's time. So this is a developing story still. And of course, we are going to find out tonight where the premiere location is going to be taking place for that first episode of AEW Collision on June 17. If it's at the United Center in Chicago, Illinois, it would suggest CM Punk, he's locked in. It's going to happen. They've resolved the A-Steel part of things. If it's at Daly's place or somewhere else, it would suggest that maybe there's still work to do when it comes to CM Punk and his status is still very much up in the air. Now, when it comes to Daly's place, it's quite an interesting story here when it comes from Nick Houseman of House of Wrestling. Now, last Wednesday at the Warner Brothers Discovery Upfront presentation, of course, AEW was officially announced. That being a week ago today. Amazing what can happen in seven days, along with the premiere date of June 17. What was not announced was the inclusion of CM Punk as part of the brand of or where the debut would be taking place. Later that night, Tony Khan addressed the AEW fans on Dynamite and announced five of the six cities that will host the inaugural AEW Collision uh, TV tapings. Interestingly, Khan did not announce where the first show would be taking place, which many have speculated will be taking place at the United Center in Chicago, Illinois. Now, the United Center would certainly play the perfect backdrop for Punk's return to All Elite action. Roughly two years ago, uh, CM Punk officially cemented himself with the company when he debuted on the second episode of AEW Rampage. The event took place at the United Center and had the moniker of the first dance, a play on the, popular, the name of the popular Chicago Bulls documentary, but something many fans took as an illusion of Punk's return. 
Following Punk's non-announcement for AEW Collision, rumours began to run rampant in regard to Punk and his status with AEW. It was reported later that graphics had been designed for Punk's announcement but were not used. It would also appear that Punk was listed in an early cached version of the AEW Collision press release but did not make the final draft. As fans and pundits put those pieces together, many assumed something negative had happened between Punk and AEW. And of course, Nick Houseman did report last week that the day before the WBD upfront presentation, Tony Khan and AEW changed their mind in regard to bringing A Steel back on site to work for AEW Collision. Steel had been hired or rehired rather several months prior and had been working remotely due to his presence upsetting some backstage. The understanding was that Steel would be brought back to work at Collision along with CM Punk, but when that didn't materialise, lawyers got involved and Punk was subsequently pulled from the Collision announcements. As was also reported by Houseman, despite lawyers getting involved, the relationship and communication between Punk and Khan remained on sound footing, and the impression that he got is that they were working to rectify the situation. Now, one rumour that has popped up, as I mentioned, since that report is that AEW has lined up Daly's plays connected to Jacksonville Jaguar TIA TIAA field earmarked as a backup venue in case things with punk once again fall apart and the United Center would need to be cancelled. Now, in an interview that Nick Houseman did with Grapsody's Righteous Reg, they reacted to the rumor about Daly's place as a possible backup plan. Quote, so we're all under the impression that CM Punk is going to be the leader of this show. And then it's immediately like, oh, well, actually, maybe he might not be. Uh, this is what Reg said. And then some fake rumors come out about Daly's place and the United Center and all this stuff going on. But it seems as though we're all systems go. Tomorrow, today, they should be announcing they're going to have the first collision at the United Center. Center. Now, when Nick Houseman pressed Reg on whether what he said about the Daily's Place rumor was speculation or something he could concretely confirm, he said, quote, that's nothing, he asserted. I went myself in search for an answer to this and there was nothing to that rumor. That's just some random person online getting to Dave Meltzer and kind of getting this rumor started up. There's That's a nothing rumor. So according to Righteous Reg from Grapsody in this interview of Nick Houseman. He's suggesting that the idea of Daly's Place being lined up is just a rumour. There's nothing to it, which does kind of line up with what Sean Ross Sapp is saying over there at Fightful, that Daly's Place explicitly hasn't been lined up or confirmed or anything like that. Maybe backups have been discussed, but it would appear that tonight we are going to be getting that confirmation that CM Punk is back and that the first collision is going to be taking place at the United Center in Chicago, Illinois. Of course, as with anything in AEW and CM Punk at the moment, everything's very fluid. So if something does change, when it possibly does change later today, of course, we'll let you know in a future video. Now, what you're looking at right there on the screen could be the brand new logo for AEW. And it is a logo that we've started to see a little bit more, particularly when it comes to the collision announcement. Now, last week, All Elite Wrestling filed a new trademark for a variation on the company's logo. The trademark features the AEW letters uh, as they currently are on the company's logo, but without the words All Elite Wrestling around them. The logo variation is filed for use in entertainment services, but it turns out we could be seeing a whole lot more of the logo in the future. Per Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select, the variation of the AEW logo that was trademarked could end up becoming the permanent version of the company's logo eventually. AEW has used the same logo since the company's inception in 2019, with Dynamite undergoing a major visual change at the beginning of this year. Obviously, as I mentioned, you can see the updated version of the logo on the screen. What are your thoughts on it? What are your thoughts? on the new logo do you like that do you like the removal of the all elite wrestling do you like the more slimline version is this a way to kind of get AEW away from maybe the elite side of things considering that their future's up in the air when it comes to their contracts expiring later on this year and into next year what are your thoughts about it all let me know your thoughts as always in the comment section below now, AW Fight Forever is coming out at the, the end of June, and some people were worried about the violence. The blood, of course, that was one of the holdups in this, is that they couldn't secure that T for Teen rating because of the violence and because of the blood. Now, AW Fight Forever is set to release on June 29 after a rather long release cycle. One of the main holdups with the game was due to its ESRB rating, with the game allegedly not qualifying for a T rating as it had hoped. To comply with ESRB standards, several things needed to be removed or toned down in order for the game to be granted that T for Teen rating. 
fans of AEW's television product will know there's usually blood featured on the show most weeks, especially when John Moxley is booked to wrestle. The change to the game's rating led to some concern from fans hoping for blood to be featured in the game, but those fears have rather emphatically been put to rest. The AEW Games Twitter account had responded to the concerns, letting it be known that blood is very much still featured in the game, and quite a lot of it. Um, as you can see on the screen right there, this is just one of the screenshots that was released yesterday. It's Orange Cassidy versus Chris Jericho. That's a lot of blood <laughs> on there. And it does remind me, I must be said, of those sort of SmackDown versus Raw games. You know, if you kept going after the head and then you got the blood. So as I mentioned, when it comes to AEW Fight Forever, we will be streaming it here on the channel. So if that's your kind of thing, be sure to subscribe bottom right hand corner. We will be streaming it once the game comes out, along with WWE 2K23, which I want to get into as well. So we are going to get gaming, wrestling gaming, streaming here on the channel soon. And when it comes to the release date in question, as I mentioned, the reason that June 29 specifically was chosen as the release date for AW Fight Forever has now been revealed. The official announcement was made by Kenny Omega this week on the AW Games social media pages. The game was originally announced back in November 2020 and has reportedly been delayed numerous times due to issues such as having to tone down the aforementioned violence and the gore to get that teenage rating. With the date now finally set and just over a month away, a new report has revealed exactly why June 29 was chosen. June 29 is a Thursday, which goes against the video game tradition of being released on either a Tuesday or a Friday. According to Matt Black for WrestleZone, sources said the reason for a Thursday was chosen so that the game can be promoted on the June 28 episode of AEW Dynamite, which would obviously be on a Wednesday night. The idea is to drive people to getting last minute pre-orders in and then be able to play it as soon as it releases at midnight, just a couple of hours after Dynamite has been finished. AEW and THQ Nordic reportedly have a lot of marketing ready for the next several weeks ahead of the game's release so that's why because they want to have one last push on the final dynamite before the game gets released now dark side of the ring is going to be premiering very very soon pro wrestling fans are once again gearing up for another season of dark side of the ring for those unaware and have never seen the series before the critically acclaimed docuseries shines a light on the more unfortunate and controversial stories from the industry's past including deep looks at tragedies like chris benoit owen hart's fall from the rafters and now the now infamous plane ride from how the latest season will debut May 30 at 10 p.m. Eastern on Vice TV, and Dark Side of the Ring co-creator Evan Husney has now revealed the correct episode order and air dates for Dark Side of the Ring season four. So on May 30, you're going to be getting Chris and Tammy, that being the season premiere. Of course, that's going to be about Chris Candido and Tammy Cinch, Sunny. Uh, on the following week, we're going to get the Magnum TA story. That's going to be followed by the Graham Dynasty. Then we're going to be getting what happened to Doink the Clown. After that, the Junkyard Dog, the Tragic Four of Adrian Adonis, Bash at the Beach two. Thousand Abdullah the Butcher, Legacy of Blood, Bam Bam Bigelow, The Beast from the East, and the season finale is going to be The World According to Marty Jannetty. Now, it must be said, a lot of those episodes have me very interested, and some of them, as always, are going to be absolutely wild. Now, when it comes to... Dark Side of the Ring, of course, it airs on Vice, and Vice has been in the news a lot recently when it comes to them filing for bankruptcy, and a new interview has revealed how Vice's bankruptcy will affect Dark Side of the Ring. On May 15, Vice Media filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. In a statement made by Vice, the company stated, the process is likely to result in the sale of Vice, which will continue to operate during the proceedings. Vice Media includes Vice TV, which is the home of the highly popular wrestling documentary series Dark Side of the Ring. Speaking to Julia Channon of Nocturnal Co creator of Dark Side of the Ring, Evan Husney, was asked if Vice's filing would have any impact on the show. He answered, quote, all indications that I have been briefed and told that this basically changes nothing for Dark Side of the Ring and for the health of the show. And for the show airing and all that stuff, everything's on track and everything is just like it would have been in any other circumstance. So everything is business as usual. As I mentioned, Dark Side of the Ring Season 4 will premiere on Tuesday, May 30, with an episode focused on the lives and careers of Tammy Sitch, that being Sonny, and Chris Candido. Now, let's talk about Mercedes Monet. Of course, she suffered an injury, perhaps possibly a broken ankle, this past weekend for New Japan Pro Wrestling. Now, the plans of Mercedes Monet to win her second New Japan Championship were changed following an injury she sustained on May 21st. During that New Japan Pro Wrestling Resurgence show, a four-woman tournament took place to crown the inaugural New Japan Strong Women's title 
title holder. With the main event of the show seeing AEW's Willow Nightingale take on Monet to crown the first New Japan Strong Women's Champion, Monet would favour her leg during the match. As previously reported, post-match she would be helped backstage with a reported broken ankle. Monet would confirm that she sustained an injury on her Twitter account. It would later be revealed that WWE's Tamina had been in attendance at the show to support Monet and had also helped the New Japan Pro Wrestling star when she was backstage. PW Insider has provided further details of the plans for the New Japan Strong Women's Championship, confirming that Monet was set to become the inaugural champion. The plans were changed during the match when an audible was called, switching the finish to Nightingale being the victor, of course, with the worry being that Monet had suffered a serious injury, which of course she did. So Nightingale winning the title wasn't part of the plan. It was actually an audible called during the match. Finally, Adam Cole has opened up about his injury struggles and his plans for if pro wrestling was going to be off the table if he was forced to retire due to his concussion. Now, Adam Cole made his return to AEW TV back in March, officially returning to the ring after suffering a serious concussion in the summer of 2022. The concussion, which he suffered during his match at the AEW New Japan Pro Wrestling Forbidden Door event, was very touch and go for Cole, with it sometimes seeming like a real possibility he would never return to the ring at all. Luckily for everyone, that didn't turn out to be the case, but Cole spoke about his recovery to Swerve Strickland on the Swerve City podcast, where he revealed that he made plans for life without wrestling. He said, quote, I'm not kidding, and I'm sorry because this sounds like such a standard answer, but I really do mean this. I was mentally preparing to have to start a new life without wrestling that was so difficult for me. I'm thinking maybe I'll Twitch stream, maybe I'll do something in gaming, maybe I'll start a wrestling school. I was really mentally prepared, trying to prepare myself for that happening, being cleared and being able to come back and travel again and being on an airplane, walk out to the ring and have a match. My goal going forward is just to be able to continue to wrestle. When I was able to come back and wrestle Daniel Garcia and be out there with Britt and the fans and the confetti came down, it was my favorite moment of my career because of how much it meant to me and how for months and months I thought I wasn't going to be able to come back. At this point, of course, I have goals like I want to move up the ranks in AEW and challenge for and maybe someday be a world champion and travel and do more things and awesome stuff within wrestling. At this point, when I wake up, there is this whole new appreciation for this job. I never lost appreciation for wrestling, but now after going through what I went through, I'm not kidding. Every single week I show up at TV and I'm like, I have the best job in the world. This is incredible. Wrestling week to week, that's the main goal. So certainly Adam Cole reveals that again, it was very touch and go when it came to his concussion and a possible in-ring retirement. But there you go, guys. It's the latest AEW news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right-hand corner. Let me know your thoughts, as always, in the comment section below. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.